how to make DIY silicone moulds for resin and also jelly resin so we can make our casting squishy. The liquid silicone rubber that I use by Let's Resin is really easy to use and we can create resin moulds with it. I have some MDF and acrylic shapes that I'm going to make my casting from. For the mould housing you can use a tub with a flat base or you can use an adjustable moulding like this one. I have a sheet of acetate on the bottom adding double sided tape to every piece. I go through the process a little bit more thoroughly in one of my other videos if you need a bit more help. Everything's well stuck down so now I need my liquid silicone rubber. Each pack contains a part A and a part B and you need to measure by weight equal quantities of both. Then make sure you mix really thoroughly. You can see with my mould I've utilised every bit of space so added a few more little hearts in to really get the most out of this mould. With the silicone rubber fully mixed I then pour a thin and steady stream. This allows the solution to get in every little area so that you make the most perfect mould you can. The silicone is now cured and so I can remove the mould casing. If you can make your own silicone moulds like this then just think your project time can become even more creative. I remove this in this way so that I can always use this base and repeat the process once more. From this stage always leave your mould another 24 hours to cure completely and you'll see definitely why later. Here comes the squishy and the jelly element to this silicone rubber. This is an OA silicone rubber by Let's Resin and it's much more flexible so take a look at the link below. This comes as a kit and some cookie cutters that you can use this with as a regular silicone mould as we did just before but as I said I'm going to do this slightly different and show you how we can make these squishy. Again it has part A and part B that want to be measured in equal quantities by weight and then thoroughly mixed together. Make sure you cover all surfaces, wear gloves and a mask if needed, always with really good ventilation in the room. Thank you to Let's Resin for sponsoring this video. Let's Resin has a fantastic range of products and everything I use in this video is linked in the description below, along with my RRB discount codes. I find Let's Resin products to be of high quality and I really enjoy all the creativity their products bring to me. The OA silicone rubber is thoroughly mixed and I want to add some different colours to this so I have some other cups that I can separate it out amongst and then add some different colours. It's best not to add any liquid colour as this will stop the silicone from curing properly. So these Let's Resin mica powders are perfect and give your silicone a lovely shimmer. I quite often add just a little dot of acrylic paint as well, others might suggest that it's not necessarily the best thing to do but I've never found any problems with it. So best to read the pack instructions and see what it recommends to use. With the mica powders alone you can certainly get some lovely and vibrant colours. I also have the metallic powders by Let's Resin, they are really beautiful as well and go really well in the resin and the silicone. I do use lots of Let's Resin products in lots of my other videos so please take a look at my other videos for lots more inspiration and if you are enjoying this please give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed already please do subscribe. The little pots of mica powder are really quite small but as you can see you really hardly need any for a project. You could probably get away with using even less than that for this quantity of silicon rubber or if it was resin just the same. Projects like this are so fun and I hope you find them therapeutic too and I really hope that you find some inspiration from them. Mix up lots of different colours and then we're ready to pour. If you wanted to try this OA rubber out straight away and you haven't already made your own mould, don't worry, you can actually use any of the moulds that you currently have. I find that they're perfectly fine but don't use anything that you are absolutely precious over. These are some ready-made silicone moulds by Let's Resin and I'm going to use all of these with the OA silicone rubber but with no mould release. So the liquid OA rubber is going into the silicone mould that I've just made. 
There are so many different designs and uses for this, so please use this as inspiration and create something wonderful yourself. If you're worried about using too much product in your first project, then make sure you do just start small so that you're mixing smaller quantities and therefore wasting less if it doesn't go quite right. And please don't worry if things do go wrong at first time, things go wrong for all of us. I'm using a stick here to drizzle in to all the smaller areas, but I don't fancy my chances of getting these out very neatly, because as I do this, I realize they're so, so thin. If you are a beginner, I'd go for some bolder, more solid shapes with less intricate detail, as you'll find that a little bit easier to begin with. The silicon takes some time to cure, so it's perfectly fine to clear up any little spillages. What shapes would you pour and what would you like to make? Please do comment below. Adding some in to the shop bought silicon moulds. Warning, if you do this with your regular silicon rubber, the silicon will get stuck in these moulds. With every project though, I always say do a test piece. Never believe what I say 100%, test it for yourself. Clean up any spillages with a rag and then leave these to cure on a nice level surface. You can get different kinds of moulds as well so I thought I'd try it with this ice cube tray to show you the results. I then left everything to cure but do you remember when I said make sure you leave that silicon mould for 24 hours before you put anything else in it? Well I jumped ahead completely forgot and filled my new silicone mould straight away with the OA silicone rubber. Oh dear, it's completely stuck as expected so make sure you leave your mould to cure fully for another 24 hours once it's released from the casting. I did eventually get some of them to release but it should not be this hard so I made another one to show you right now after leaving this for 24 hours. Here I am with the mould. I forgot to show you the kit comes with a little edger so that you can nice and neatly take all the little remnants off the edges just in case you want to create a little business and sell these. You can make them really perfect before you post them out. 24 hours later I mixed up some more OA silicon rubber and poured it into my new mould. They're all cured and then as if by magic they release and that's how they should release just like that lovely and cleanly and look at the stretch on those how fun what would you make with this product do comment below. A big thank you again to Let's Resin for allowing me to create all these wonderful projects that I have great fun with. And again from the shop bought silicon moulds, the silicon releases really easily. When there's some finer details like these they just get stuck that little bit more but with a nice gentle tug they release. One thing I did notice about the pre-made moulds was that they seem to warp and distort a little as you can see here whereas I think with the mould that I made it's thick, robust and sturdy and doesn't have room to distort. With the ice cube tray they came out really sticky and you can see that bit of residue left behind on the mould and they are super sticky and feel a bit wet still but they are fully formed and really great fun. I wouldn't give these to kids as you don't want them to mistake them as sweets so they're just a bit of fun for us to do a project with as these are definitely not to be consumed. These are really super sticky and I'm sure they'd be really useful for something. I wanted to test out layering the silicon up to see if that worked. So I poured some of the silicon a little bit shallower so I can add some more bits and add some silicon in around these. Let's see if I can release those really thin silicon pieces. With a little bit more encouragement I can set them free. They're very delicate perhaps pulled a little hard with these but my idea was to write 
I heart you and then fill in the gap around the outside but I think my you was a little bit wibbly wobbly so change of plan I'm just going to add some hearts in there and see if I can add some more silicon around the edge to adhere this all together. With this silicon mould that I made the acrylic pieces came out really well but where I had the wooden pieces that were cut on my laser they didn't produce a perfect mould and they got stuck with the wooden pieces. I could probably get around this with a bit of spray paint or varnish on those wood pieces. The little hearts are actually on top of the white silicon and I'm pouring some purple silicon over the top. Again the OA silicon as this will adhere with the OA silicon but not with the general silicon. After leaving it to cure it's worked wonderfully so I could do lots of different designs where I can create a shape and then add the shapes together to make something really quite unique. So how would you use these? Please do comment below. Super stretchy and a little bit sticky. They stick really well to the kitchen units and the tiles and to glass and to plant pots and lots of different items. So I think they're really quite fun. How would you use yours? Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next creative video. Bye for now.